Tonight we've got a shootout. There'll be 10 laps to go. And they have a 10 lap rule here in the Bush Series, but actually it's 11 to go, so they will have a double file restart of the safety car. Don't let away. Look at you here. machine involved. Let's see who can get through. The track is almost blocked here on the front stretch. Here's Dale Jarrett. Get out of there, Robert. We've got to... And this race is over. For all intents and purposes, this race is over. That was major. We just got together with Buckshot and went straight up the race. There, there is Tony Stewart involved. The second place car was involved. There's a 59 car on fire. Robert Presley, he is out of the car. The Kingsford charcoal machine, there's Presley standing down by the fence. They have red flagged the race. Here comes the fire crew over to try to extinguish the blaze in the car number 59. Give me something here, give me something. Turn on some so I can spray. Now, there we go, now we're going. My heavens, the car's involved. Once again, there's Robert Presley walking across. There's the Virginia is for lovers machine for Kevin Grubb. He was involved climbing out of his car. There's the 34, Mike McLaughlin, back, he the car 34 back on pit road. He was third in the points coming in. He was running sixth. He was involved. And they can't put this fire out. We see it blazing back up again. There's see Tony Stewart, one of the Grubb boys. I guess that was Kevin walking across the racetrack. We're going to try to get a word here from Robert Presley, who just really was involved with a big fire. Robert, the big, big crash out there, but really great news to see that you're out of the car and okay. Tell us what happened out there. Buckshot Jones. That's about all we can say. I, I don't know. I don't, I, yeah, I don't want to say anything. I shouldn't. Uh, he just stupidity is about all you can say about him. I mean, uh, he had nothing to gain. and. You know, heck, we're going to finish second. We was good in the long run. We might have got Dale, but I can't blame it. I know why everybody's calling him an idiot now. Well, it's a good thing he had his fire suit on right there because that car really lit up. And, Jerry, I think you made a good point right before they went to the restart. It was a double-file restart, and that's always trouble here at Bristol. And Vinnie Parsons made a call and showed that Dale Jarrett was able to get away. And we mentioned the double zero was fast. Here's again what happened. They go in the third corner. That's double zero. Buckshot on the bottom. As they come off the corner, Robert comes down trying to get to the bottom of the racetrack so he can catch Dale Jarrett. They make contact in the outside wall. There's Elton Sawyer going in. And then I guess we've broken a fuel line off the 59 car. Wouldn't you guess, Kyle, that all that fire came from the fuel line? It, it had to be a fuel line. If you watch the way the 44 hooks up behind the, the 59 car of, of Robert Plessing, they both drive straight into the wall. You watch them right here. As they come, they get in the buckshot, or buckshot gets into them, whichever way you want to see it. And watch them. They drive straight up the bank like a train, straight into the wall. These two cars hit hard. He's pinned up against the outside wall. Obviously, he's throwing a lot of sparks. and It probably broke the, the fuel pump to Ford. It's on the right side over there. It probably knocked the fuel pump off. You see the stream of fuel. And these guys that, that are behind him had no place to go because when you see it again, you see how much smoke was there, and, and there's nothing. These guys finally just had to stop and weave their way through it. Once again, from the uh, roof cam from Matt Kenseth. Don't front. Stay down low. Where's all my brakes? There they are. Wait on, man. It's the front. Yeah, there you go. He just stopped. Just going by feet of what sees the fire hot. Now, here's Elton Sawyer. And watch this, gang. Wow. The spotter was trying to drive him through it. Let's see what Mike McLaughlin sees. Elton Sawyer. My God, 
I understand. Here's Tony Stewart, who, who stood to gain at least a third place finish tonight, standing by with Ray. He sure is, Doc. And Tony, we know things happen in a big time hurry here at Bristol. Tell us what you saw from your view. Uh, you know, the double zero was uh, under the 59, and. You know, Robert was just trying to get around so he could try to work on the 32 car, and, uh, you know, it didn't take much contact. It was just a light touch, and, uh, you know, got Robert loose, and I was right behind Robert, and it got me into him. I couldn't get slowed down, and I got into him, and uh, it just took us both the wall. Every week, this 44 car is awfully strong, but you just can't get the good finish. Well, I mean, I think Joe Gibbs, the important thing to him is that we're running well. I mean, uh, things like this are going to happen, and it's part of auto racing, and, uh, you know, I can't thank Joe and Shell and Pontiac enough. I mean, these guys have... Uh, have done a great job. You know, Goodyear had a great tire here. The tire wear was excellent. You know, we went over 125 laps on the first set of tires, and, uh, you know, we had a good night going. Just wish we could have finished it. And, guys, so much about this is just getting experience, and Tony was doing a great job running up there in the top five. Boy, was he ever. Now, let's run down again. The cars involved in this, the 10th caution flag of the night, as we have a red flag situation here at Bristol, Tennessee. Tony Stewart, we just talked to a moment ago. Robert Presley. Presley was running second. Stewart was running third. Mike McLaughlin was running sixth. Kevin Grubb was involved. We told you the double zero. A buckshot was involved in the initial contact. Elton Sawyer, the 38 car, who was running back in fourth spot. Tim Fita with a 33 spun. Ricky Craven, the car number two spun. And that's what's left of the field as they are parked here on the backstretch preparing to run the final eight laps here at Bristol, Tennessee. You know, it's, it's, it's a shame. When I saw the restart, and they gave the one to go with 11 laps to go. Folks, if it had been 10 laps to go, there's a 10-lap rule, which means all the cars on the lead lap, the 12 cars or whatever that were on the lead lap, would start in front, nose to tail. All the cars laps down would start behind them. When I saw the restart, one to go with 11 laps to go, I thought to myself, I wish they had waited for one more lap to give the restart, to give the one to go. But again, NASCAR doesn't want to rob the fans here of all the green flag racing they can and run another caution lap needlessly. But I, it would have saved a lot of this if they could just had that 10 lap to go rule and had a single file restart. And speaking of the fans, the views the fans had, this crowd of almost 100,000 tonight, had a great view of the 10th and hopefully final caution flights. They come right at you down the front stretch. Eight cars involved. Heavy, heavy damage and flame from beneath Robert Presley's Chevrolet. Back with more of the finish in just a moment.